Primum non non quiera. This is where we're going to start. Come in Latin. Anybody want to take a guess? There in the back. We're home watching this online course. Primum non non quiera. Want to look it up? That's that girl who talks to us on our phones. Or do you know? This is going to be the foundation of this course on ethics. Would you like me to explain? Primo, primo, primero is firstly. First or firstly. Number one. Primero. Primo. None don't care. First, none, no. Firstly, don't do something. Okay? You got it yet? One more time to look it up. Firstly, do no harm. Firstly, do no harm. That's going to be the foundation of this course, this online course in ethics. Firstly, do no harm. We're giving bonus points. If you can tell me who is the author of that saying, got it in quotes. Want to look it up? Hippocrates, around 420 BCE. Okay? Hippocrates was the first doctor, first medical university, medical school, started in during the Golden Age of Greece. Um, but it's part of the Hippocratic Oath. Or the Hippocratic Oath. Firstly, do no harm. In the healthcare field, doctors, everybody, you work in counseling, you work in drug and alcohol, substance use disorder, mental health counseling, that's the healthcare field, it applies to us too. And again, that's going to be the foundation of this training.
talked about client center. Did a little background research on that. It was by Carl Rogers. Uh, there's an incongruence between self uh, concept and actual uh, experience creates an emotional problems and mental disorders. And I think you all got that when I was explaining about this is congruent, you know, this is not congruent, and that there's an incongruency between our patient's emotional well-being, what they think, their own self-efficacy of how they see themselves as a good person, whatever it is, and how and their actual behavior, where the examples of where we look for discrepancies, you know, where they they love their wife, they love their mother, yet they're steal, they stole their mother's jewelry to go out and buy drugs. And there's an incongruency of what they feel about themselves and how they're behaving, and that causes emotional problems, and you can see where that would do that. So that's one of the issues we want to help our patients identify. We want to treat them with respect, genuineness, and the highest regard. We want to listen and try to understand things from the client's point of view. And we want to be transparent, which means self-aware and acceptance and having no false persona, no hidden agendas, you know. Although it's not the clinical definition of that, we want to keep it real. Have to be you employ active listening skills and be present in the therapeutic alliance. Be present with them in an individual session. No hidden agendas and listen to what they're saying. They want to be heard. No one's listened to them before. So here we are with Dr. Rogers. If someone really hears you without passing judgment on you, without uh, trying to take responsibility for you, without trying to mold you, it feels damn good. It feels damn good. Damn you know? good. Because for the most part, nobody's listened to them at all before. So it, it feels good to, and you can see right there, and this is the memory of uh, Dr. Rogers. Again, we stand on the shoulders of the giants who were before us.
So the next part I want to talk about is called the, I'm going to use the word client, but now we call it patients. Or on our forms it says patients. Because if you're, an, if you're working for an outpatient program or an inpatient program, specifically outpatient, sometimes they call them clients, but on our forms in New York State now it's all patients. So I'm just going to say they're interchangeable, client patients. So we're going to call it client in this case, because I like the C, so it's called a Client counselor relationship. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'll just tell you here, this has to do with what I was talking about before the therapeutic alliance. This therapeutic alliance, which is part of the client counselor relationship. There's, a, there's an alliance here between these two. Okay? Which we call a rapport. And I'm just going to say this for the people who haven't taken the KSAC exam. Remember this word, rapport, because this is going to be on the exam. What is the primary objective of that first, assessment? your first interaction with a client? The first time you're meeting a client, whether it's probably to do the assessment, but it could be where they've already had the assessment and you're going to be their counselor and you've got their paperwork and, you know, you're going to be their counselor. What's your primary objective of that relationship? And I'll tell you, it's just on the exam. The primary objective of that is to establish a rapport so you can work in collaboration and build this client-counselor relationship. The primary objective of that initial meeting is to establish a rapport. And you'll see that answer. That's, going to, that's one of the questions on the KSAC exam. Now, how do you do that? Shout out, anyway. Be a good guy? I find bias by um, aligning yourself with the uh, client. Okay, um, so when we talk... We'll, we that's talk, that therapeutic alliance. You we're going to talk about that in... You in, start in, with a patient dish. <laughs> I know what you're trying to say. Yes. And that's going to be part of the motivational interviewing, which is later on, or the motivational interviewing assessment. That's called empathy. You're going to have empathy. And one is, I have another course on cultural competence, but you can't... Your cultural lens, you've got to take off all those biases, prejudice, preconceived generalizations, right? all these things, you have to take them off and look at them, look at that like a blank slate with empathy. You want to be empathetic. You want to meet them where they are. This is client-centered. Client-centered therapy. You want to meet them where they are and establish a rapport through a process, I won't write it out, through a process called genuineness, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, later on. These are all the principles of a social worker, <laughs> right? These are all the things that they... Mm -hmm. this, you, 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 if, if you have... Because that's your, what I learned, and, and you being a master's now in social work. Social work, work human services major, yeah. you know, this is what, this, this is, this is uh, counseling 101. Right. And when I teach yeah. this over at the co college, you know, and when I, well, I teach documentation too, but, but it's all about counseling. Even this, ethics, is about counseling. Because this is how you develop a client counselor relationship. If you know what those ethical standards are, and, you, and your morals are good, and so you're really building on this ethical standard that you have, and you understand what the patient's rights are, and you understand what uh, the, 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 the therapeutic alliance, how to build that, that's what's going to make you a good counselor. For all those case acts, maybe who aren't social workers or don't have degrees or whatever, they're going to, you know, this mm -hmm. will be new to them. Well, this is this is what this is what we teach yeah. counselors. Right. This is what, you know, this is part. I mean, what I teach over the college at the community college, people that are studying for their case act, it's it's all about counseling with me. I mean, it, 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 we can be learning whatever course you're taking. I'm always going to put in, you know, that this this is this is a counseling course. 
this is this is an ethics course to be an addiction professional or addiction counselor. But this is this is all this is all about counseling. This is how you do it. This is this is what this is why we learn ethics to be able to uh, develop this counselor client therapeutic alliance or relationship. Okay, so any, any questions on that? Okay, why would we need to do that? Anybody shout out. To gain effective treatment. To gain effective treatment. It is it's very effective. This is very effective. Building a therapeutic alliance within the, the confines of the counselor client relationship based on establishing a rapport, empathy, and genuineness is exactly that. 